Larian Studios is out, and Lego and Margot Robbie are rushing in to save Hasbro. Will it work? We analyze today on Dungeon Craft. Death Bringer here. Subscribe to the channel and sign up for the Death Bringer RPG newsletter at the link below. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor DM, and this channel is about all things role playing games, and we have some breaking news. So, Lego has released a DD set, and it's retailing for $359.99. And to be honest with you, it's cool as hell. It comes with a castle, and it looks like a tavern and a forest, and I gotta be honest, man, it's so dope. I think I've been saying this for about four or five years, if you go back in my old videos. I said that Dungeons Dragons and Lego is a natural match. I always used Legos with my kids playing D&D, &D, like it was Dwarven Forge, and they were always building castles and stuff, so it is just like found money, and it's clearly successful. You can only get it on back order, so it's flying off the shelves faster than they can make it. Meanwhile, on Wednesday it was announced Margot Robbie would be developing a Monopoly movie, which Hasbro has had in the works for some time. Obviously, you see the connection. She made a big hit out of Barbie, so Monopoly, why not? And Larian Studios will not make a sequel to Baldur's Gate. And people ask me my opinion on this, but I didn't think it was a whole video's worth of stuff because well, it seems to me obvious. When Larian signed those contracts to develop a video game version of Dungeons and Dragons back in 2017, the game was way less popular. This was before the pandemic and Stranger Things made it blow up. So Larian was able to negotiate very favorable terms, which would have to be renegotiated for a sequel, and they'd rather just work on new original material using D&D &D as a springboard. Now, way more people know about the quality of their work, so why not develop their own original IPs? It just makes total sense. It also makes sense for Wizards of the Coast. Why are they going to pay Larian Studios more money to develop a new video game when they could get a cheaper studio to develop a game, and even if it's not as good with the IP, they'll probably make nearly as much money. Or they can make a game on their own. They've got all these developers working on the VTT, which will be completed shortly, and then it's only going to need some upkeep and maintenance, so why not just shift them to a, a video game for D&D and just keep it all in-house? As I mentioned in a previous video, Monopoly Go is actually the most popular video in the on the planet right now. It's just a mobile game where you move around a board and buy buildings. It's ridiculously simple and it's made two billion dollars. And I don't know what we'll ultimately call the next version of D&D, &D, the one that's coming this year, the 50th anniversary version of D&D, &D, but I can promise you the next edition of D&D &D is called D&D &D Go. It is a no-brainer. You're just gonna go around on your phone, going through a dungeon, killing orcs, getting treasure, leveling up. I proposed this in a previous video and I got tons of comments of people saying, yeah, I would do that while we're waiting to set up our game. Why not? It's free money. In this article, Hasbro CEO on the future of Dungeons & Dragons after the 50th anniversary says, If you look at Dungeons & Dragons, if you look at our board games, more people are playing these games than ever before. Our satisfaction rates, the happiness that players have, are higher than ever. He's probably talking about that survey from a couple of weeks ago, how satisfied you are with with D&D, and they quickly took it down, but Bob Worldbuilder, I, I think he's still got his survey open, and he's collecting the data there. I can't imagine that people have already forgiven them over the OGL, but that's his story and he's sticking with it. Cox says, we have one of the best gaming portfolios in the world. I think when you talk to Hasbro CEO on our second 100th anniversary, 99 years from now, I think they'll be talking about how we're still in toys, and how we're still in games, and how we're still talking about the next generation of exciting technologies or play patterns that we can be innovating on. Certainly that's what we're trying to build for now and I'm confident we'll be building it in the future as well. And then he gets into the Q&A and they ask him tough questions like about the layoffs, but he gets all corporate -y. And instead I'm gonna give you my analysis, but first, a message from our sponsor, my buddy Luke at DM's Lair. Are you a dungeon master looking to run 5th edition games that your players will love? These two massive tomes, Layers and Legends 2 and Loot and Lores 2, are designed to let you plug and play professionally developed adventures, encounters, monsters, magic items, brain burning puzzles, and more easily into your game. Both books will contain hundreds of pages of 5th edition Game Master resources, carefully crafted by a team of expert Game Masters to be both exciting to run and easy to use. 30 standalone encounters with maps, 30 puzzles, 30 traps, 
20 magic items, 20 monster templates designed to be applied to any base stat block, and six custom rule sets, including rules for naval combat, rewards and recognition, insanity, illness and disease, and more. Layers and Legends 2 and Loot and Lore 2 are exactly what you need. So let us help you take some of the heavy lifting out of being a game master and click the link below to follow Layers and Legends 2 and get notified when it goes live this Tuesday, April 2nd. Okay, my analysis. How does this all come together? For Hasbro, D&D is not a game. It is a brand. Over 20 years ago, there was a company called Marvel Entertainment Group, and it was emerging from bankruptcy, and I suggested to my father he buy shares in it at 99 cents. And he said, why? You're not reading comic books anymore. This company is going out of business. And I said, Dad, it's not about the comic books. It's about the characters. Every time a Spider-Man t-shirt is sold, Marvel makes money. So my dad bought a bunch, and then when the Spider-Man movies came up, it went up. And then when the Iron Man movie came up, it went up even more, eventually being bought by Disney for $35 a share. And Marvel went on to turn second string heroes like Iron Man and Doctor Strange into multi-million dollar movies. Now flash forward to a quarter century later, even fewer people are reading comic books. More people are familiar with Spider-Man from seeing him in the movies and playing him in video games than they are reading him in comic books. It's not that the comic books still aren't produced, they are but they just have a smaller readership. It's mostly a crucible for them to throw out ideas, see what works, so those ideas could be mined for future movies. And that is, I think, how Chris Cox sees Dungeons & Dragons. A partnership with LEGO is brilliant because it gets kids into D&D and, and parents will buy those LEGO sets for their kids. Increasingly, you're seeing D&D emerge as a lifestyle brand with things like Beholder plushies and D&D action figures and D&D t-shirts and button-down shirts and all different types of clothing. It's true, D&D sales are flagging, but that might be just in anticipation of this new edition. And as Ben Milton at Questing Beast points out, the OSR is definitely growing, and that's a good thing. That's where a lot of hardcore game enthusiasts are investing their money. I've said it a million times, there's a core D&D audience that only plays D&D and will never play any other game. And then there are the people that are into other games as well. For them, D&D is a gateway drug, and then they get into Mothership and Pirate Borg and Easy D6. It's not like these fields are in competition with each other. To me, I see them as trains on parallel tracks. One might overtake one in the near or far term, but both are going in the same direction, taking tabletop RPGs to a new, wider audience. Why did they fire the book department? Because they're not concerned as much with D&D as a pen and paper game. Think about what Daggerheart's going through right now. They're gonna be revamping and revising their game based on the playtest info. Think about all the people that are involved in making that game. Reading it, editing it, layout, proofreading, artists. I mean, it is a huge effort. And if they're lucky, they're gonna make millions of dollars. But with D&D Go, Hasbro can make billions of dollars. Doesn't mean D&D is over or it's dying or anything like that. They're not gonna have as many editions of the game in the future because editions mean a lot of brains need to be paid to work on them. As the market leader, all they need to do is coast. And in the future, when you say Dungeons and Dragons, people will associate it with video games as opposed to the tabletop experience. In the same way kids today associate Marvel with movies as opposed to comic books. And I'm okay with that. I think that the tabletop enthusiasts people that are watching this channel will still play those games at conventions and they'll be more popular than ever. So it's not all gloom and doom, it's just the game is evolving in two different directions. At least, that's what I think. What do you think? Share in the comments below. Also below, there's a link to Dungeon Crap Patreon if you want to support the channel and get extra content and access to my exclusive Discord server. And make sure you tune in Monday when I reveal my ultimate Game Masters screen. You don't want to miss it. I'll see you then. May all your rolls be 20s. What kind of hellhole is this? Margot Robbie is coming here? Don't worry, Margot. I'll protect you. In the meantime, watch more Dungeon Craft.